Well, folks, we've got a big patch coming tomorrow. Uh, it's basically the expansion pre-patch, but uh, also got some updates to duels and battlegrounds and mercenaries and arena. So let's uh, let's dive into these 22.0 patch notes and uh, break all this stuff down. So, uh, of course, this is the expansion pre-patch, which paves the way for Fractured Alterac Valley, which is still releasing December 7th. And uh, it has some details here about all of the different honor points you can gain. And essentially, this is the system of like Horde versus Alliance to determine, uh, I guess, the diamond card reward that we'll eventually get. Uh, if you want to read more about this, hit that link in the description. I'll include it down there. Uh, you're welcome to read that. I'm not going to go into great detail here. Uh, we've also got mercenaries updates. I'm going to skip these for now and move over to uh battlegrounds and actually we'll kick it off with duels first and foremost because i think most of you care most about duels on this channel so duels updates on december 7th uh fractured ultra valley and goblins versus gnomes will be added to the eligible card pools new buckets will be added to cover the cards from newly added card sets so some new stuff uh to play around with goblins versus gnomes i haven't looked in detail at what's available but uh you know the card strength on average is lower in older sets, and that is one of the oldest sets, so I suspect there won't be too many major disruptions from Goblins versus Gnomes, but certainly Alterac Valley will shake up the meta a ton. Uh, also, we've got uh, some new passive uh, treasures here. Natural Force is a nature spell damage treasure, so this is actually pretty cool. There's a lot of Shaman and Druid in particular that could use nature spell damage to great success. This artwork seems to hint at at uh, Shaman at the very least. I might be able to zoom in a little more on this. I'm already mega zoomed in, 250% here. Uh, so that looks really good. I think I think there's a lot of nature decks that can use that successfully. Uh, we've also got fire spell damage. Now this is something that Mage, and actually maybe again, Shaman could do really well with. And these are pool one, by the way. So uh, there are still some combos available, like I think Flame Waves in pool two with Kindling Flame and <clears throat> Pool 1. I think Flame Waves is Pool 2. So, uh, some real nice uh, spell school support. We've also got Unholy Gift. Uh, at the start of the game, shuffle five Death Knight cards into your deck. Now, these are presumably the Death Knight cards from Arphis and the Lich King, some of which are pretty solid, like some great removal, some some great like burst damage. I think Frostmourne is actually a little slow for duels, so that might be the low roll, but most of the other ones are pretty quick and and uh, effective for their cost so uh this is not bad at all now the downside is of course you still these aren't gonna be like cast when drawn or anything as far as i can tell it looks like you're just gonna be drawing the card so it'll be an average increase to the quality of your deck by a little but it could still push like key treasures or uh, other cards you know deeper into your deck so i i don't think this will actually be a super great treasure although i'm certainly excited to try it uh we've also got bitter cold here's a frost spell damage this is again really cool for mage there's like some good board clears and stuff uh that can benefit from this making your cone of cold much more effective those sorts of things also of course shaman once all valley comes out we'll probably be able to use this to some insane success also the artwork on this is just really really cool and then uh pool two treasures this is where things ramp up here a little more expedited burial at the start of the game change each death rattle minion in your hand and deck into a one one that costs one so you might be able to get some crazy big death rattle effects that would normally cost way more uh, but play them very very early in the game and try to overwhelm your opponent also just like that cost can matter for things like hunter like weaving in uh hero powers to activate death rattles We've also got Mantle of Ignition. Whenever you target a minion with a spell, cast it again on its neighbors. So this seems kind of insane to me because it's not just like removal spells, which would be great. You know, cast a brain freeze and it brain freezes extra things, turning your brain freeze into a very good <laughs> cone of gold. Uh, I don't know why cone of gold keeps coming up as an example, but there you go. But uh, maybe more importantly is uh, buffs. You could use this on your own minions. It doesn't say like enemy minions or damage spells. So... Uh, if you have three minions on board, you cast a, a big buff. It's going to buff your entire board, which I don't even know how this interacts with banana split and those sorts of things, but there are some crazy combinations and duels that might be possible with this if you build your deck for it. This looks kind of nuts. 
We've also got the Imp Credible Trousers. After you cast a Fell spell, shuffle two Fell Rifts into your deck. That's like the new three threes <clears throat> that auto summon when drawing the uh, Fell Rifts, like we see in the Warlock cards for Altrak Valley. Um, I, I don't know. This doesn't seem that great to me. Like two is a lot, but it's sometimes hard to leverage those minions, and and sometimes decks get so big in duels that this won't be happening that consistently. So I, I think I like the other fell treasures better, but uh, it's intriguing anyway. Let's get iron roots. After you cast an Azure spell, give a random friendly minion plus two, plus two, and taunt. So this is kind of like a, a Guff's base minions effect, where you're buffing your board. Uh, and also giving taunt. So this is kind of neat. You, you might be able to pop off with a bunch of cheap nature spells and buff one thing really, really big as long as you have some minion action. I think that's pretty decent. Bronze Signet, whenever you draw a minion, add a copy of it to your hand. So this is definitely a high value sort of uh, treasure. And if you have minions that are either like really fast and fill a curve or do something really nice like treasure minions or so on super synergistic stuff i could see this getting there it's not exactly tempo driven though which is where a lot of things succeed in duels you want high tempo plays and this is more value than tempo which makes me nervous if it's like a battle stance your hero has plus two attack on your turn i wouldn't sleep on this that's kind of intriguing just getting a lot of extra damage through some aggro builds might be able to use this to surprising success We've also got Ring of Black Ice. Whenever a minion is frozen, add a copy of it to your hand. Uh, I don't think this is going to be enough. This is, again, a really value-driven passive. It's a bit like Eerie Stone used to be, and I don't think Eerie Stone was great until it got, like, the cost discount added in. So I do think this will be a little bit slow, and I, I think Frozen decks will just want to be able to turn the corner harder than this might allow. We've also got Idols of Elune. At the end of your turn, cast a spell you've cast this turn so this is kind of intriguing targets are chosen at random by the way so uh you know you want the right kinds of spells but there's all kinds of big spells where you just cast one of in a given turn they could pay off there's treasures there's stuff like uh scenarian wards just like get a big old repeat on your spell i think that's actually pretty good if you build your deck for big spell mage or your big spell druid or something you could have some really significant uh swings off of idols of Elune. We've also got Runic Helm, uh, passive at the end of your turn, add a random Death Knight card to your hand. So this is a lot of value. Unlike that other one where it kind of disrupts your draw, this one's just free. And I think that's going to be really good. That's just a lot of extra cards. and They're going to be very solid cards most of the time. This is a very, very powerful passive, I think. We've got Cloak of Emerald Dreams at the end of your turn, add a Dream card to your hand. Same story here. Dream cards are way better than normal cards on average. This is a lot of free value. So I think this will be great because uh, you're getting both the high tempo dream cards, but also just a ton of extra stuff. We've got Glacial Downpour. Then if you turn summon a 3-6 Water Elemental, if you've crossed, cast a Frost spell this turn. I actually kind of like this. I, I think you're going to get enough tempo out of this to make it worth it. And, and the freezes on the Water Elementals can be really disruptive to weapon-based or attack-based synergies, which there are a lot of in duels. So just getting a free Water Elemental every couple turns even, I think, is a big deal. And uh, that wraps it up for the duels passives. As far as I saw, there's no shifting of other passives. I think these are just getting added into the set. So there's a lot more diversity for treasures in duels now, which is going to make runs feel very different and mixed up a ton. So e extremely excited to see this. So now let's talk about uh, Battlegrounds. Diablo is getting removed, which a lot of people out here are excited about for Battlegrounds. We also got some new heroes. Scabs is coming to Battlegrounds. Uh, for two gold, he'll discover a plain copy of a minion from your next opponent's warband. So this is intriguing. It's kind of like an opposite test, I guess, but like you only get, uh, you know, three choices instead of sort of uh, the full warband. But, you know, if your opponent is going to have some crazy amalgam on or just like some awesome thing, it could definitely be worth it because uh, this is both a discounted minion and you only spend two to get the minion as opposed to normally three. But also, you know, you're kind of filtering to better stuff because the shop is totally random. Your opponents have selected things that are good, presumably, so you get a higher likelihood to get good minions. Uh, not to mention, of course, if you know that they're all elementals and you need elementals specifically, that's even better. So I think this is intriguing. Um, cheaper minions have been okay in battlegrounds historically from what i've seen so i think this looks pretty cool controlled and cheaper are both good uh is that actually the only new 
Battlegrounds Hero? Oh, I thought there were more for some reason. Oh no, that's really it. But I guess Battlegrounds is getting a new board. Are boards? Introducing Battlegrounds boards, an all new cosmetic option for Hearthstone Battlegrounds. Battlegrounds boards are special boards that you can bring to the combat phase of your Battlegrounds bouts. These boards sport new visuals for you to see and show off to your opponents. Battlegrounds boards are shared with you and your opponent. You may not see your board every round. Okay, cool. These look great. That's awesome looking. Very Battlegrounds themed, but still sick. Bob's first board is the Arena of Champions. I guess that's this one. Celebration of Bob's favorite customer, you. So a new way to uh, monetize Battlegrounds. I'm cool with that. Cosmetic monetization is totally fine. So those look nice. Excited to see more of those. So next up, we've got uh, some Mercenaries updates. I'm frankly not going to go into a lot of detail on these. As you know, I haven't been playing Mercenaries. I'm not going to be able to offer some great insights. So I'll just cover very high level. You got Valera finally coming to Mercenaries. I, this makes sense. She's kind of been a core story character for the Mercenaries story unfolding. Um, I didn't look too much here, but uh, it seems like she's got some very damage-based stuff, attack and damage-based things, which certainly makes a lot of sense for Valera. Uh, also some speed buffs, which I guess historically have been fairly strong. That's cool. Also, Sky Admiral Admiral Rogers. I don't guess I know who Sky Admiral Rogers is. I'm looking that up real quick. Sky Admiral Rogers. I don't know what she has to do with Aldrich Valley or anything, but maybe she pops into Aldrich. I don't know. Um, anyway, another human, uh, or new human. Of course, Valeria's a blood elf. Actually, it looks like she's kind of around to counter pirates, some pirate tech. She goes immune while attacking pirates, so that's interesting to see uh, some pirate tech action. Also, some punish here on speed, dealing 25 damage to all enemies that have already acted. So if she goes last, uh, she can really push some crazy damage. Uh, she's a caster, so particularly against protectors. That looks pretty nuts. Also, Trigor the Lasher, a rare protector, seems to have some positional-based abilities, both rewarding and punishing uh, like adjacent attacks and things. So uh, maybe a way to to protect or kind of um, punish your opponent for focusing down certain targets, which uh, seems pretty cool. And then Vanessa, another epic protector here. She's a pirate and uh, a little mix of stuff. Some like attack debuffs that you can then use really quickly to deal damage, but also uh, a cooldown addition. So slowing down your opponent's abilities by a single turn, but later, because she's a cooldown once. So maybe off the bench, disrupting people. That sounds pretty nifty. And some new bounties moving through BWL, it looks like. I'm glad they're adding new stuff to tackle. Sounds like that last round was pretty hard, so. If you're enjoying Mercenaries, some new toys to play with. Excited for you. I will not be checking this out, but still happy the game mode is getting support and seeing some play. And then next up, we have an arena rotation. Dual class arena is ending, and we're getting these sets in uh arena i have no idea how to <laughs> break this down i'm sure there are some cards here that are terrifying and some and some problems that'll pop up but uh here's your new arena rotation if you have any thoughts on this or or what it means or what to make of it please of course share those in the comments below very curious to hear how this arena rotation is gonna look and feel and beyond that lots of uh bug fixes and game improvements which are always great to see Oh, hey, looky here. We also got uh, rewards track info, I guess, for Alterac Valley. So a preview of all the skins and uh, the rewards for the rewards track. Um, I'm not going to break down the math on this. Clearly, there's some math. I'm sure it's similar to what we've seen before, but double check the folks who are doing math stuff to make sure all these numbers still look and sound good. Uh, we got new diamond cards. Korak actually looks like a pretty sick diamond card and Belinda a diamond card for mage. She's not really popping out of frame a ton in this. I'm curious to see uh, what the animation looks like. Also, of course, there'll be the third special diamond card I talked about earlier based on the faction battle. And uh, also some rewards here, I guess, for the honor that you gain. Some frost wolf kennels and ice blood towers in golden and so on and so forth, depending on which side you chose. I guess here it says all players who complete the quest chain earn the same rewards, though the order of the rewards depends on the faction. So that's actually good that everybody gets everything. I, I was scared we were going to like miss out on stuff depending on a bad choice. So uh, that is indeed a relief. Also, the tavern pass rewards here, a big old stack of stuff. My God, look at all this uh, for what is it? Twenty dollars, twenty five dollars. You can tell I pay a lot of attention. Portraits for Brucon, Cariel, Varden. 
looks like a uh, Reno portrait for Battlegrounds, or maybe that's a bartender. Is that bartender Bob or Reno? I can't tell. Either way, cool new bartender, uh, some golden stuff. Wait, are these alternate skins? Oh, no, that's mercenaries. Oh. <sighs> I got really disappointed. Golden Locklar, that is a sick-looking card back. Sorry the art on this is really not any good. If I zoom in, it won't help, I promise. It's like low res. It might help a little. Let's see. Uh... Yeah, a lot of battleground skins in particular. I'm less excited about the battleground skins, but some new coins. These actually look really good. I think these are like the best looking coins yet. Horde versus Alliance, but also this coin just looks really epic with that nice teal color and very intricate design. Uh, also, there will be a 35 card mini set that will make it easier to get these coins. Cool. Good confirmation there. So, yeah, looks like an awesome, uh, awesome little journey like always. Again, I will link this in the comments if you want to read more detail here. I don't want to break down all the numbers, of course, so I think skimming is fine. All that said, thanks much for watching this video. Uh, leave all your thoughts down below. Excited to try all this stuff out. That said, thanks for watching, and until next time, game 